Thanks to the supporters of channel member Brex. After an incredible start to the season, we get a nice real test today. It's FA Cup first round day, the best day in the lower league football calendar. And we have one of the biggest draws we could have hoped for. We are away from home against Preston, who are currently second in League One. Also got our big derby game against Kidderminster, which is live on the telly. What a what an episode. Hello and welcome to part 28 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that FA Cup first round tie away against Preston. And then assuming there's no replay, we'll also show you Kidderminster. I'll do the Weymouth game off camera. Um, Kidderminster, local derby, and it's on the telly. We've got to show you Kidderminster. But Preston, first up, um, managed by John Terry. Lovely to get one over on John Terry. But before all of that, let's have a look to see how we've been getting on since the last episode. As you can see, we have continued to be... Excellent. Just unbeaten all season long. In fact, we're not. We lost to Kings Lynn. I always forget about that. Unbeaten since Kings Lynn. And we absolutely thumped Farsley in the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. And that's a team we we're in the same division as last year. Uh, but we're just we're just a really good side. This is what the league table looks like. We are top of the league. One point clear of Chesterfield. And then there's an eight point gap behind Chesterfield to third place Torquay. So it's looking like a two-horse race between us and Chesterfield for automatic promotion as we've now passed the halfway point of the season, despite the fact it's only the 9th of November. Uh, ben Andrucci no longer top scorer in the division, though. Um, Yeovil have got a player who's surpassed him. Harvey Rhodes is still the best player in the league, though. 7.72 average rating for him. And with regard to Preston, if we just go up a couple of leagues, there are Preston, second in League One, um, just behind Derby slightly above our city neighbours, Coventry. So um it'd be nice to it'd be nice to go and get one over on them. Realistically, we're away from home against Preston. We're gonna get absolutely battered, I imagine. But what we are quite interested in is what their average attendance has been this season, because we could use the money. So average attendance is gonna be on here somewhere. I never understand how the... Ah, there you go. Attendances. Can we have a look at the average attendance table? Preston have an average attendance of 12,000 people. If we can get anywhere close to that for an FA Cup game, which is a big ask, let's say if we get 8,000 for an FA Cup game, that will still be the biggest crowd we've played in front of in this save, which will be a nice little financial boost because we have just dipped back below the red line in our finances and the projection is not looking too clever. We could do with some cash coming in. Um, certainly, just playing at Preston will get us some cash. It would be the dream if we could beat them and keep the FA Cup run alive because there's so much good prize money in the FA Cup in these early stages for smaller clubs as well. But um, I think it's very un unlikely that we're going to pull off a result. Like we are two form teams. They're obviously two divisions above us and a little bit better than we Just a little bit better than we are. But this is a team we're going to be sending there just to see what can happen. We've got Marshall in goal. A back four of Cullinan, Akagbu, Colvin and Senior. Livermore and Magoma in midfield. Adidokin, Thomas and Ocoflex then supporting Andrucci, who's going to be playing up front. Um, we still really need a left back. Um, we've only got the one at the club, Hendry. He's, he's got tired little legs and is currently resting. Um, so Cullinan's going to have to play at left back against a League One side. A long, long way from ideal. He is a competent left back, but very much a centre back. Um, he's never played at this level in his career. I suspect Preston are probably going to have quite a lot of joy down that right-hand side. We do still have money in our budget if the right left-back comes along. But at this stage of the season, believe it or not, the right left-back doesn't come along. I, I don't really know what we can hope to do other than maybe January there'll be a decent loan option available from a, a football league club. But I think even that is probably... Being a little bit hopeful. Um, oh my word, I thought we'd just taken the lead, lead inside 40 seconds. Adi Doken gets in behind, cuts it back to Andrucci, who has hit the post. Andrucci doesn't miss very often anymore, but he has hit the post there. And I imagine when all is said and done, that'll be our big chance of the game because I can't imagine we're going to get too many more opportunities to grab a goal against League One opposition. Although we've dealt with... Um, that pressed an attack quite comfortably there. And Livermore doing very well in midfield, playing it through to Thomas. Ball over the top again to Andrucci, who's through on goal. Andrucci looks to chip the keeper. He has had two big chances 
inside the first two minutes of this game. First one was just a snatch chance, and he's unlucky that it's hit the post that time. I've got to believe he's going to be better off just thundering it past the goalkeeper. Um, I hope we're not seeing wasteful Ben Andrucci that we were so used to last year. He's been so prolific in the conference for us this time around, but maybe at this level, um, he's back to what we always remember about him. That's a beautiful piece of goalkeeping keeping from Marshall there, making himself very big and forcing the corner for Preston. I just noticed as well, only 6,000 people have turned up. I'm not sure how that compares to the attendances in our last cup runs. Um, it's not going to be loads of money. It's obviously more money than we can get for a home game, um, but it's not going to be uh, not going to be filling out the finances for years to come, is it? A little bit disappointing. I'd like to think in real life, we'd be quite an interesting tie for a team like Preston. And certainly anyone who's ever been to a Leamington match in their life would surely want to make the trip to go and play in probably the biggest game in the club's history. Would this be? I'm, I don't know. Leamington locals. Has there ever been a bigger game than this? My goodness me. There's your advantage of playing a centre-back at fullback. He's a big boy who's very strong and can throw the ball a long, long way. There might be an argument for getting my centre-backs taking these long throws because I think strength has more to do with how good a long throw is than the long throw stat. He's got a seven for his long throw stat. To be fair, he's only got 11 on his strength. What what possible reason is there for him to be able to, being able to do a throw like that? Either way, throw it he did, and we've gone 1-0 up away from home against League One opposition. Can we? I'd love to hold on to this, please. They've got a Mooney up front. It's not Hal Mooney, surely. Imagine if Kelsey Mooney, he's got a mohawk. Imagine if Kelsey Mooney was released by us and went to play for Preston in League One. It's definitely not Kelsey Mooney. And now, we've, I mean, we're facing Pele, for goodness sake. Marshall doesn't even move because, you know, it's Pele. Probably, I would, I dare say it's not the Pele, but all the same, it's a pretty scary thing to come up against. And Marshall, it's like he's never seen anyone take a penalty before. He made a really good save early on, but I think he's just decided to let them have a goal there, which is a little bit unfortunate. Either way, we have been, we've been competitive in this first half, 1-1 one, one at half time. And you've got to say, it's a fair reflection of how that first half has gone. We've been excellent. I did notice Oco Flex has picked up a knock towards the end of that first half. So we probably need to take him off at half time. Max Waltman can come on to play on the right wing for us in this second half. But we have done ourselves proud in the first half of this match. Um, we're pretty much level on XG, a little bit behind on XG. Um, but we've had more shots and we are we are giving it a go. We've not come here to sit back and defend, which is probably what Preston would have been expecting us to do, unless they'd scouted us properly, because if they'd scouted us properly, they'd know that I would never dream of doing a thing like that. But, oh my word, I don't know if the in-game scouting AI for the opposition goes into that much depth, or whether it just works out what it would do, rather than actually looking at what opponents usually do and scouting it from there. I can't imagine it's that advanced. That would just be... I mean, that's that's some impressive AI if the nerds at Sports Interactive have managed to put that together. Um, we've given away a free kick here on the edge of the area. A little bit unnecessary, I think. I don't know that it was an immediate goal threat, whereas this set piece absolutely is. But Marshall is there again to make the save. He's been excellent from open play. I just wish he'd tried to save the penalty. It was such a, a weird non-attempt at saving the penalty. It's like he was gambling on it just being directly at him. But from open play again, um, another great save for Marshall. He's flinging, flinging himself at everything. I think he's remembered that this is likely to be on the telly. We're going to be on match of the day here. And he needs to be remembered for more than being the goalkeeper who just looked at a penalty going past him. And he's done very well again there, clutching the corner to his chest. Still only on a 6.8 because presumably the penalty nonsense goes against him. But from what I've seen in the match engine... He's been excellent apart from that. Free kick from range. Marshall again there to make the save. And Livermore scrambles it clear, but it's back to a Preston player. And they are piling the pressure on in this second half. Um, it, if anything, it's going to give us an opportunity to hit them on a counter-attack if we can hold them at bay. Marshall again. Now, can we have one of his big lumps forward? Apparently not. And that would have been the perfect opportunity for him to just drop the ball at his feet. They don't know what's going on. And he just smashes it over the top. For a uh, for a goal, but um, maybe not. Right, we're going to bring Olcock on for Andrucci. Andrucci, like I say, has been wasteful today. Um, I think we'll leave it at there for the changes for now. We don't need to change 
too much. Livermore and Magoma, they're very high quality in central midfield. And if they can still walk, I don't think we can do better than having those two boys in there. They're probably football league quality as it is. Livermore showing his football league quality, although it's actually a pass that it's left Waltman with a lot to do and put us in some trouble there. Uh, but luckily, the shot is a wild one that goes wide. I think Marshall probably has it covered anyway. And now we do need to freshen up the midfield. Um, Magoma can come off. Scott Smith can come on in there. It allows Livermore to become the box-to-box -box midfielder. And Smith can just stand in there doing some crunching in the central midfield. I think, we, I don't. is it a replay? Is it extra time? I don't know how the FA Cup works anymore. It seems to change all the time. But a replay means we forget Kidderminster. We're forgetting Kidderminster, folks. You'll just have to just have to accept that it happened off camera. We don't want to we don't want to do too many matches too close together. Um, but what we will be doing is showing you the set the replay against Preston, which we've still got to play Weymouth off camera. That's weird. It's such a long wait for the replay. But it means we're going to be in the draw for the second round of the FA Cup. So I'll show you that. Um, I'm going to give Andrucci a rest. That might explain why he was struggling a little bit in that game. We'll send him on holiday for a week. Three weeks? Fine. I want him fit. We'll send him on holiday for three weeks. Why? I, I, you know, I just consider it an injury. I'll go with what my physio says. Always trust the staff. Um, when is the draw? We'll be back for the draw in a second because I don't think it's going to come up on this next. Continues back until December. What a lovely long holiday. Ben Andrucci. Goodness me. Can I have three weeks off? That'd be awesome. Right, we have got the FA Cup second round draw and we've actually got to play two games now before Preston. The replay's been moved back a further week because Preston had international call-ups. Quite frankly, I think they should be made to play us with a skeleton squad. If they can't beat a non-league team first time around, then they should be they should be punished second time around. Um, but we are in the hat for the second round of the FA Cup. So we're just looking for... A big away game again. We're after money here. If we can, in the unlikely event we make it past Preston, we want a big away game against a Sunderland or a Portsmouth or an Ipswich or whoever might still... I mean, Bradford would have been nice. Just a, a club that's going to get a lot of fans through the door. Um, I don't really know who there's likely to be at this level who fits that criteria. Filed still going strong. There's still quite a few non-league teams in the FA Cup at this stage. Um, I mean, right, we, if we get past Preston, it is a home draw against Oldershot or Bristol Rovers. You've got to believe if we make it past Preston, we're getting into the third round of the FA Cup and all the potential money that's attached to that. This this second, this it's not a second leg, it's a replay. We earned it. It's a replay. This replay, very, very important. Get your tickets now, boys and girls. It's going to, we're going to sell out the butt arena or whatever it's called. I don't think it's quite the butter... Is it the Butterina? We're going to sell out Butts Park... That's no better. Butts Park Arena. Well, we've spent those two games off camera doing that thing that you do in Football Manager when there's a big game on the horizon and you don't play very well. We played two teams in the relegation zone at home, Weymouth and Kidderminster. Only scored one goal across the two games. It was a 90th minute scuffed effort from the edge of the area after a misfired corner. So, yeah, uh, we are still top of the league, which is nice because Chesterfield are bottling it even harder than we are. And we got a club record attendance against Kidderminster. 3,000 people turned up for the Kidderminster game against our normal home attendance of around 1,000 people. Be interesting to see how many people come to the Preston game just a few games later. If I was doing the marketing for the club, you can be sure there'd be some kind of double header pricing the Kidderminster and Preston games because that's two games in four days where we're trying to get close to capacity at a club that never gets close to capacity. There's got to be some shenanigans to get us there. Uh, but this is the team we're going to be putting out there for the Preston match. Andrucci's still away on his holiday. I mean, I imagine his absence has something to do with our newfound lack of being able to score goals. But it's more important, even though we'd like to keep like to get through in the FA Cup, it's more important that we have him fully fit and firing for the second half of the league season than it is that we play him in a in an FA Cup game against Preston. We, I think we, the fact that we've played so many games so fast, so close together early in this season, the fact we've played half the season in two and a half months, 
is really starting to take its toll on this small squad of players that play a high tempo system. Most of them have now had some holidays or some rest periods from training because they just they're playing too much football. As much as I'm trying to rotate, they're still playing too much football. So our team for the latest in a long line of biggest clubs in the history of the football club is Marshall in goal, a back four of Hendry, Colvin, Price, and Senior, Livermore and Magoma in midfield, Thomas McInef and Ocoflex supporting Olcock up front. A win puts us into the second round of the FA Cup, gives us a big chance at a route into the third round of the FA Cup because whoever we play in the next round, they're not as good as Preston. But I suspect John Terry's team are going to come here and get the job done that they didn't get done like nearly three weeks ago now. It's ridiculous how long it's been. Look how full the Butts Park Arena is. It's absolutely loaded with people and we've scored inside the first two minutes. Donnell Thomas with the first chance of the game. It's a ball over the top. Thomas gets in behind and he's driven it low into that far corner past the Preston goalkeeper. And that is the dream start that we were hoping for. Livermore dinks it over the top to Thomas. Thomas brings it down beautifully on his right foot. Hits it first time off his left. We're 1-0 up against Preston. This is ridiculous. Livermore is a very, very... I tell you what, Livermore and Magoma in midfield. This is a very good side, but that midfield is exceptional. And Thomas with an excellent finish there. It is our new record attendance as well. Nearly 3,700 people in, breaking the record, uh, and break, breaking the all-time club record attendance for the second time in a week. That's when you know this is a club on the rise. Um, there's Mr. Mohawk Mooney again, which I imagine is his full name. Um, he's in behind. It's hideous having a Mooney score against us. Um, but it's exactly what he has done. And it's 1-1, 12 minutes gone. The Preston fans behind this goal seem to be enjoying that as much as you would expect them to. And that's probably the end of the little dream world fantasy that we've been in now. Um, we've we had, we had a nice first leg. We've had our 10 minutes of singing at the top of our lungs in the... It's not legs, it's a replay. <laughs> We've had the 10 minutes of singing at the top of our lungs in the replay. But I suspect now, yeah, I've played this I've played this game before. This is this is a familiar football manager shape that we're taking on here and we are just going to get thumped and there's there's not a lot we're going to be able to do about it. We've we've done our best. We've kept pace with them. I think we are getting battered now because they are they are too good for us. They are much higher quality. They're two divisions above us. We are giving it all we can and we'll continue to. You never know. But we've only had that one shot on target in the first half an hour of the game because we've had that one shot. And we I think we probably scored too early. Upset Preston early on and they've come out and uh, just re-established control of the game. What we can only hope for now is that we have another good start of the second half and just make a game of it. If we can, if we can, if we can draw this game level... They might just panic enough for us to, to to nick it somehow. And that would be incredible. But regardless of the result in this game, I think the the fact that we've had the, the two matches, oh my word, Ocoflex has hit the post. Inside 20 seconds of the second half. If that goes in, all hell breaks loose in the in the stay in the stands. That would have been absurd. Uh, but yeah, we've had these two matches against Preston. We've gone from being in debt to comfortably not in debt. We've broken the record attendance twice. We'll check in on the finances again after this match. Remember, we were just just overdrawn before the first match against Preston. I suspect we're going to have a six-figure bank balance after this little run of games. So it's certainly nothing to be too disappointed in. We've held our own against a League One team and we've helped the financial situation. We might not have done enough to uh, to stop us being in debt again by the end of the season, it's a nice little pile of cash to tide us over in the meantime, which is what the FA Cup's all about, isn't it, for these little clubs? Yeah, 3-1 now. Any any hope we had is gone. And I just hope the Leamington faithful, who, I mean, they, they would have had a disappointing Saturday against Kidderminster, but they did get the win in the end, so they've got bragging rights locally. But it, it was a boring game. It was very minimal hearts. I probably could have put the entire... I could have put all the highlights from the Kidderminster game into this video and it wouldn't have been very much longer than it actually is. 
Um, I didn't record them, so that's why I've not done that. I don't sit here commentating when I'm not planning on putting a, a match in a video. I'm not insane. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope we've done enough to convince some of these new fans to stick around because if we can... if we That is just sensational from Marshall. I mean, he's, he's hard done by there to have conceded a goal. He's sat there on a 6.3, and it's just really harsh on him because he is... How many saves has he made in this move? Oh, that's a block. That's a block. Maybe it's not Marshall. There's Marshall with a save. Um, that's another block. Okay, it's three blocks and one save. It's not quite as impressive. I thought he'd made three or four saves as part of that. Um, I mean, he, I think he had it covered most times. It's some good defending. But we are 4-1 down now. Donnell Thomas is now injured, so he can come off. Waltman can come on on that side. We'll take off Oco Flex as well. Adedoyan can come on for him. And we don't have a right back on the bench. Shea Price, I'm not going to move him out to right back. He is a six foot five monster who I don't really want playing at fullback for me. And um, but yeah, we've been we've been smashed today, as you would expect. I mean, we've got a, we've got a nice little goal back. I think how is how is that offside linesman? We're better than that. We're not going to be offside from a free kick for goodness sake. We're not going to be offside from a free kick, he says, and then immediately is shown six players were offside for that free kick. This is why we need some... Tra We've not trained all year. This It's catching up with us. We're not training because we're playing twice a week, so we don't get to train. I think we need to just do a little bit of a recap with the boys on how offside works. And now there shouldn't be six of you stood in an offside position when a free kick is taken, you morons. Um, Livermore playing it back to McInef would have been nice for us to to grab a second there, just to give our fans a little bit a little bit of something to cheer about before they head home. But it seems like it's not to be. Although we have got one more attack. Cross comes in. There is Max Waltman. There is the little something to cheer about for the road home. It's Leamington two, Preston four. No shame in that at all against the League One club. And now we're going to go and check out what this has done to the finances as well, because that's. That's where the that's where the real winner is decided. If it's if this and the Kidderminster game between them have sorted out our financial issues that we were drifting back into, then we count that as a victory. We count that as a victory. That's like a that's a hundred and twenty thousand pounds swing in the space of three weeks. That will do very nice. That keeps us going for a little bit longer. This looks a lot more positive than it did before. Um, we've taken in £160,000 of gate receipts this month compared to last season when we only took in 284000 So that's two-thirds of last season's total gate receipts taken in in a month. That's been a good month. Now we can focus back in on the National League again. Um, I would have liked to have shown you the Chesterfield game, but it's so soon. Um, but I guess it is a key match. Uh, we're at Torquay are the other team. Are they? Do we play them? We're going to have to. I've got to show you Chesterfield, haven't I? Because it's the only. It's the, it is the last time we play them this season. So we'll be back tomorrow for Chesterfield and probably Gloucester. I doubt I'll show you the FA Trophy game. Um, but we'll do Chesterfield and Gloucester. Then after that, we'll get a bunch of games done and try and get this season wrapped up in the next three days or so. Obviously, it'll be a little bit longer if we end up having to play in the playoffs. But at the moment, we're looking pretty good. Chesterfield tomorrow. We're heading to the Football League, boys and girls. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.